welcome you to South Africa and we thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to introduce to you Prof Barry and Prof Anderson, a little bit older professor than you. Dr. Tarani, what does the wise man hear and what do you want to reflect a bit on this discourse? Maybe, maybe I'll latch on to the, the last one. Um, and, and my question really is, I, I had uh, Zain talking about education improving in the African continent. Um, I'm not sure. And maybe that's where we should be focusing the discussion. Um, and also, the earlier discussion was about teaching and teaching methods. Now, the question is, uh, I've said to people in the past that, uh, particularly in a country, in the rural areas, um, people who would fail to get placement in their chosen fields would resort to teaching. Uh, and they would find placement instantly. Now, the question is, if you entrust the brains of the young ones uh, in the hands of people who, I don't know what word to use, are not brain at all, they failed. Uh, you fail to pass metric well, and you try to get with your F, there was an F pass in the past, you try to get everywhere, and then when you go back home and you say to a family, I haven't found placement, they say try teaching, and you find placement. Now, the person who doesn't understand the concepts is now entrusted with teaching others to understand the concepts. And I have been a victim of that. I went into a class, Prof. Barry, and I was told, you want to do math. And I could see the intimidation in my teacher's eyes. He says, are you here to do math? Math is tough. Math is going to show you flames. <laughs> now, how would anyone, a young person, going to get instruction and is being told, you're in the wrong place. You can't do maths. So, the question is, is the instruction being given and even the content, are they relevant? How many Professor Baris are we missing in the African continent? Who, some people call them mad in their own village because they can't understand them. And for me, the question would be, how are we going to unearth the talent that is in Africa, for Africa to help itself, not to look elsewhere. Because part of the discourse, Prof. Anderson, today is that we are selfish human beings. And if you think the West will come here and rescue you, you need to think again. So my question would be, how, for instance, we were coming back from the Olympics just now. And each time I see the South African Olympics team, I think to myself, how many sprinters have we left out? Because there is nothing, something as basic as what you were saying, Emmanuel, that in the sports you can find expression, but not in a country. There are so many people who can run so fast, but they are in the village and there's no program to identify them. So for me, it's that question, and I don't even know how to phrase the question, but maybe in my narration, I have um, sort of asked the question in terms of the talent that goes to waste, in particularly in the African continent. What, how are we going to solve that problem? And it could extend to India and any, third world country. There is so much talent that is never identified. Someone once even told me that the, the richest place in terms of wealth is the graveyard 
Because there are so many people who have died without even identifying their God-given talent. Thanks for that perspective again linking yesterday and tomorrow. So any comment on the challenge of talent? Yeah, I feel like there is so much talent that goes wasted, not just in Africa. I feel like Africa is a sort of bad example but, uh, because uh, there are many countries, as Zane mentioned, that are very well educated. But I feel that in general, the educational system has so much wasted talent. The, uh, the point that Dr. Mabanda brought up is really nice because I think that there was so much wasted talent in the education system. And this wasted talent is never coming to fruition because we don't allow people to imagine we don't allow people to use their imagination and we don't allow people to find their own passion their own love we instead just push them into the fields and subjects that we think are mandatory and we don't give them the amount of in-depth uh, either we don't give them the amount of depth they want uh, as for people like me who are crazy about math and science there were probably millions of other people who are just like like me have this passion in math and science but I have been taught well and I have a great school but many people don't really have that kind of access and some people don't even have access to education uh, when I was on the plane like two days ago I was watching uh, before we were allowed to use the screens there was this advertisement about uh, uh, the thing an organization that would give education to kids who were out of school who didn't have access to school so this kind of thing there was so much talent that goes wasted because either they don't get quality education as there is for most schools or they don't get education at all and so this kind of talent is wasted because these people are not able to find their own passion their own love and so i think that that kind of uh, that kind of thing that kind of subject is a very nice one brought up by dr mabanda also i'm slowly being convinced by zane that uh, empathy is actually going to win over the world and the first world is going to help the third world <laughs> yeah, yeah.